broadcasting from Tower Studio. With your anchors, Katie McCoy and Ellie Pomeroy. Bringing you the latest in Blue Gold News. This is Blue Gold News Now. Good evening, I'm Ellie Pomerlu. And I'm Katie McCoy. Coming up tonight, UWC hosts its first in-person culture fest since the pandemic. But first, a 14-year-old is charged with the homicide of Liliana Peters of Chippewa Falls. A 14-year-old suspect has been arrested in the case of 10-year-old Lily Peters, a Chippewa Falls girl who was found dead in her hometown on Monday morning. Bond has been set at $1 million for the suspect. The Chippewa County District Attorney said that because of what the suspect told investigators, there is a need to keep the suspect in jail to protect the community. The suspect, who is being identified as CPB, is being tried as an adult in court. He's being charged with first-degree intentional homicide and two counts of sexual assault. Two of the charges have a maximum penalty of life in prison. He will next appear in court late next week on May 5th. A Water Street store owner has been charged with selling fentanyl. Dwayne Perkins, owner of Drip Kicks, is faced with 14 charges, with four of those charges being related to the selling of fentanyl. Other charges include upholding a drug trafficking location, possession of a firearm by a felon, and pointing a firearm at another person, among other charges he received. The Eau Claire Police Department discovered Perkins has been selling drugs from his store for about a year after receiving several tips and a criminal complaint. Inside of the store, police found the THC, fentanyl, a handgun, and a large sum of $100 bills. Perkins admitted to helping people find fentanyl and other drugs, saying he was helping people get what they need. Perkins is currently being held at the Eau Claire County Jail, with his next court appearance being scheduled for May 3rd. People gathered in UW Eau Claire's Davie Center on Sunday to celebrate the diverse cultures that make up the Eau Claire community. Music, dancing, and food. A celebration of heritage transformed UWEC's Davies Center on Sunday. Culture Fest is a combination of uh, different cultures and groups, both student groups and groups in the community. Some come from Minnesota to, to share who they are and what they celebrate and activities and kind of their history. Culture Fest is a long-standing tradition that is unique to Eau Claire. It was an uh, international folk fair and it has a uh, history of over 50 years. Recently, it was renamed as Cultural Fest to include more cultural groups. There are many performances throughout the event from different cultural groups. Our main group is performing at 1.30, the Bashiki Indigenous uh, group. They are coming from northern Wisconsin and doing some uh, indigenous dances and exhibitions. We've got a dance group from Menominee, the Ukraine, and the Swan Lake Ballet group. Uh, string quartet, a few students doing some dances. One of the most anticipated parts of Culture Fest is the food. Uh, food, of course. The food, yeah, of course, right? The number one thing. So a lot of groups bring in food or are cooking food themselves and sell it for a fundraiser. Food is just one part that contributes to the overall purpose of Culture Fest, bringing people together. It is um, teaching students on campus and from the community about um, all the different cultures that we have within our community here since there aren't like a whole lot of other events like this here. The Chippewa Valley is a diverse community with many cultures beneath the surface. You might think it's very monocultural but there's many different people and they're very proud of their heritage and they enjoy sharing it. Reporting for Blue Gold News Now, I'm Ellie Pomerlu. For UW Eau Claire students looking to expand their horizons year-round, UWEC has many cultural centers with resources and information. Eau Claire community members gathered to watch the Sun and Take Event Center groundbreaking on Monday. VNN's Justin Narvidson has the story. Here at the Materials Complex Center, groundbreaking has just happened, which includes the Sun and Take Event Center. Three things during speeches were made clear and evident sustainability, community, and partnership. This multi-use event facility will raise the bar for sustainable, energy efficient design and forward thinking construction. Many speakers highlighted the speeches from UWEC student body president Jaden McClinsky to Mayo Clinic CEO Gianrico Ferrugia. Every time someone took the podium, the excitement for the project was obvious. The crowd cheering with every thankful message, even on a gloomy and cold Monday. After the announcement of the $12 million pledged to keeping the complex and its construction green, the same message was relayed throughout every speech. ...that true to our mission 
investing in the Sanitec Event Center to build this all electric, carbon reducing, water saving building prioritizes our planet. And it is our sincere hope that these unique features of the Sanitec Center um, will not be unique in a couple of years in that it's gonna be common and our building will essentially serve as a model so that it can be replicated again and again and again in our community uh, and also across the nation. The center is being developed as a forerunner in sustainability with the whole plan to limit the waste of construction and to allow it to have the smallest carbon footprint possible once complete. Even UWEC Chancellor James C. Schmidt mentioned sustainability while he was at the podium, but he highlighted community and partnership more. We are the community of Eau Claire. After years and years of speculation and planning, the Sonitech's dream finally has come to fruition. The bidding for the design was won by Ayers Associates here in Eau Claire with the plan for further expansion of the complex. There are currently plans for the Sonitec Event Center, which serves as a basketball arena as well, a 100-yard indoor turf football field, a general fitness facility, and a Mayo Clinic Sports Medicine Center. With that, I think we ought to turn some dirt. Reporting for Blue Gold News Now, I'm Justin Narvison. Construction will continue on the Sonitec Event Center with hopes of having the project completed in spring of 2024. The annual Anne DeVroy Forum is returning in person on Thursday in Haas Fine Arts Center. At 7 p.m., the Deputy Managing Editor of the Washington Post, Sheriff Durham's, will speak to journalism students. The DeVroy Forum occurs every year. Anne DeVroy was a graduate of UW-Eau Claire and worked as a White House correspondent. She died of cancer in 1997, and in her honor, the Washington Post created the Forum and the Anne DeVroy Memorial Fellowship. The fellowship is given to an out to an outstanding UW-Eau Claire journalism student who will win a scholarship and a three-week fellowship at the Washington Post. This fellowship winner will be announced at Thursday's forum. The UWC's McIntyre Library and the Student Office of Sustainability have launched their fourth annual shoe drive to collect pairs of new or used shoes for Souls for Souls. This is a nonprofit social enterprise that creates sustainable jobs and provides relief through the distribution of shoes and clothing around the world. The donated shoes will be distributed to Souls for Souls micro enterprise programs that creates jobs in developing nations such as Haiti and Honduras. The micro enterprise model provides individuals with the ability to start a small business by providing a steady supply of high quality, low cost products. Communications associate of the McIntyre Library. Jenna and Bonze says that they that by donating shoes into an organization like Souls for Souls not only helps those in need but also keeps usable shoes on people's feet and out of the landfills. The shoes go to this organization Souls for Souls um, and they do a lot of different things with the shoes that they collect. So new and gently used shoes like shoes that you would borrow to a friend is kind of how they determine gently. Um, those go to folks in need, so a lot of the time they're trying to get folks back on their feet so they can get in the workforce, or they're trying to get shoes to kids who may have outgrown a previous size and don't have the money to get a new size. Um, so they developed as part of um, disaster relief after Hurricane Katrina, but now they've expanded into a lot of different areas. Shoes of any style and size can be dropped off during regular library hours in the collection box located on the first floor near the library circulation desk. The 30th Annual Celebration of Excellence in Research and Creative Activity, CIRCA, is taking place this week. More than 250 research projects will be presented in the third floor of Davie Center throughout the week. At CIRCA, students have the opportunity to present their research projects to students, faculty, staff, and the community. Due to COVID precautions, CIRCA has been canceled or hosted virtually for the past two years. Presentations will continue tomorrow in the third floor of Davies, as well as the final associated event of the week, the Provost's Honors Symposium. This event features research, research and creative activity that has been nominated by department faculty and faculty mentors. For those of you itching to get to a concert, UWC University Activities Commission will be hosting its first major concert since the start of the pandemic in 2019. Rapper Bryce Vine and guest opener Landon Korroth will perform at Zorn Arena next Friday, May 6th at 7.30 p.m. Vine will feature his track La La Land and Drew Barrymore. Tickets can be purchased online until the day of the show. Tickets are $15 for UWC students and on the day of the show they will be $20. Community members can purchase tickets for $25 as well. 
A Healing Through Art event was held on Wednesday for UW-Eau Claire students, faculty, and community members. In coordination with Sexual Assault Awareness Month and National Denim Day, this event gave attendees a chance to heal and learn about resources that are available to them. Different stations let participants write letters to their future selves, create buttons, paint on denim, and paint on canvases. One station even taught participants self-defense moves. Family Planning Services and the Center for Sexual Assault Awareness, CASA, helped the students who organized the event by providing them with resources and activities. One of the event planners, Anna Schneider, says that art is a great form of healing. It's something that people are able to do, whether it's with others, their friends, their families, um, even by themselves, and kind of express how they're feeling and what they're feeling. And I feel like that was such a big part of our project that we wanted people to be able to come and express themselves, especially regarding this event, because it is something that's really hard to talk about, um, especially for people who are victims. Schneider said the event had a good turnout and she was happy to be able to provide resources to those who may need it. Well, that's all we have for you tonight. We'll see you back here next week with your latest local and university news. Make sure to follow TV10 on Instagram and check out our Instagram for more information about our weekly shows. I'm Ellie Palmerlin. And I'm Katie McCoy. Thank you and good night.